All right, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about the issue of computational complexity. Now, let me fess up in advance. This is going to be a very informal conversation. It's going to be mathematically computer science correct, but it's only going to touch the surface, and it's not going to go anywhere near as deep as you will go at some point in your study if you continue on in computer science, mathematics, engineering. It's the notion of NP-completeness. So the class, some people write script P, some people write boldface P, some people just write capital P. The class, capital P, consists of all yes, no questions for which a, an answer can be determined, yes or no, an answer, using an algorithm, which is provably correct, so you can't guess, you can't go out in the mall and buy the answer. So you have to use an algorithm which is provably correct and has a running time which is polynomial in the input size. So none, I, I haven't defined these terms, but we, we're beginning to get an idea of what it means about, to talk about the running time of an algorithm and the size of the input. So here are some examples. If I give you a list of numbers, and then I just ask you, is some specific integer in that list? There is an algorithm. What is the algorithm? Read the numbers one at a time. Halt if you find it. If you get to the end of the file and you haven't found it, the answer is no. So it's either yes or no. And there's an explicit algorithm which will solve this problem and tell you which of the two answers is correct and no one will dispute the answer. And the running time is not only polynomial in the input size, it's linear. You basically pick up the numbers in the list one at a time. So other than a little bit of opening and closing of the file, you just do n steps. So that problem is in the class P. Second problem, given a list of n numbers, can you find three distinct numbers in the list, a, b, and c, so that a plus b equals c? Yes. How do you do it? You write a loop for i equals 1 to n, for j equals i plus 1 to n, for k equals j plus 1 to n. And then you pick up the numbers three at a time, and you just check whether the sum of two of them is the third one. And if you ever find a solution, you halt and report yes, and say, take the number A on line 92, take the number B on line 683, and take the, line, the number C, and you tell where they are. You report that to the impartial referee that you have said yes, and here are the three numbers, and here's where you can find them in the file. You help the referee out. You tell the referee where they are in the file so the poor referee doesn't have to search. Okay. But let me just pause right there. Do you notice you could say to the referee, do what I did. Do what I did. But you're nice, and you don't. You tell the referee where the numbers are. You don't have to, but rewards come to people who are nice in life. So. What's the running time of your algorithm? In the language that we have used up to this point, it's big O of n cubed. Big O of n cubed. I don't care what the constant is. What I care about is n to the constant 3. And when we say runs in polynomial time, that just means that the running time is n to a constant for some constant, and it's big O of that. And 3 is a nice constant. 
10 is a nice constant. 10 to the 10th is a nice constant. Not a very practical one. So an algorithm whose running time is n to the 10 to the 10th is still polynomial. But you'll be around a long time waiting for the answer when n is 1,000. All right. And the final one I put in this list is, given a graph G, does it have an Euler circuit? So the input size you could take as the number of lines in the file. Uh, it doesn't take me long to read the first number. It's the number of edges. And so the input size for a graph is the number of edges. And then now you get into this little subtlety. Uh, you could consider it to be the number of vertices because the number of edges is O of n squared. And so a polynomial in a polynomial is a polynomial. 